Greetings, my friends. I would like to show you something. Did you ever hear about stable diffusion before? Of course you have. It has been all over the internet with all those text-to-image modules going around. In this video, we will go through a quick tutorial on how to fine-tune a stable diffusion model using DreamBooth. This is because a standard text-to-image is trained on very broad categories and sometimes may not produce the kind of images we desire. So we can use some custom images to feed it new ideas and produce things closer to what we have in mind. In this tutorial, we will be using a Google Colab running on the Fast Dream Booth repository by The Last Ben, so you can go check out his other work. As the standard, you will need a Google account and an internet connection. We will first start off with the data prep. The training images should be in a 1 by 1 ratio with a resolution of 512 pixel by 5 of 12 pixels, or if you want a higher resolution, it would be 7 and 68 pixels. But for the sake of this tutorial, I will be using the former. The first thing to do is to gather all your target photos into a single folder. You will then rename them according to the target prompt. So for this folder, I have images of Revan and Bastila and some other characters. Note how they're named. The easiest way to do this is to select the images of one prompt, then right-click Rename and type in the prompt. The numbers will be added accordingly. After doing the renaming, you can move on to cropping and resizing the photos. There's a really nice online too that allows you to easily do this on a batch of photos, so I've linked it in the description. After you are done labeling and resizing the images, you can upload it to the Google Drive. Next, we will go to the Google Colab Notebook. First step, as always, is to mount your Google Drive and download the necessary dependencies and files to run the code. Then we will download the model in the next cell. As mentioned earlier, we will be using Stable Diffusion version 2.1 with 512 pixels, so we'll select that option. You can ignore the other options here. Then, after you run that cell, you can move on to creating a session, which just basically creates a file directory in your Google Drive. I named my session the Old Republic. And then we will insert the instance images, i.e., the characters or prompts you want to insert into the model, and we will run this cell too. The next option is the concept images, which gives the model some inspiration for background and whatnot. But I'll skip that part. After that, we will move on to starting the training of the model. You can leave all these options alone and simply run the training. If you do check the option to start saving checkpoints, just remember to check in your Google Drive once in a while to delete the older checkpoints because each model is about 3 gigabytes and you won't want it disrupting your saving. If your data set is way larger, you should definitely increase the text encoder and you net training steps. The whole process will take a couple of hours, so you can do whatever you want, just don't be idle on Google Colab. Now that the model has finished training, we can move on to testing the model. We will run this cell to download additional stuff like the web user interface. Do remember to indicate the type of model trained as mentioned before. Also, click on Gradio server so you have a backup link in case the other doesn't work. Additionally, you might want to change the download locations from your drive to the notebook environment because the whole thing will take up nearly 8 gigabytes of memory. Once the links are ready, just click on them and you will be brought to this interface. Remember to keep the Google Colab running. On the top left-hand corner, you have two text boxes here to input a text prompt, which is what you want in the picture, and a negative prompt, which is what you don't want in the picture. A few other important things you should include is this checkbox, Restore Faces, which does exactly what it says. Don't change the resolution, as it will just produce duplicate artifacts. If you want to produce multiple images at once, you can increase the batch size. Probably to four will be good. You can run the text a few times to get a feel of what the model can produce. Now you can get your creative muscles working to produce some new images. Once you are satisfied with the model, you can go back to the Google Colab. Stop the cell from running and upload it to Hugging Face with these options available. Of course, you need an account and a write token inserted here, but that's it. If, however, you feel the model needs more training, just go back to the cells. But this time, 
Check the resume training checkbox and set text encoder training steps to zero while increasing the UNET training by a thousand steps. And that is it for this quick tutorial. If you want to go more in depth into these stuff, I've linked some additional useful resources in the description. If you like what is done here, do like and subscribe to the channel. If not, thanks for watching my friend, and may the force be with you.